morning. In the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, I welcome you to. I'll welcome you in a minute. <laughs> Anyway, the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, I welcome you to Mount Vernon Community Presbyterian Church. We are so, so grateful to have you all worship with us this morning. We're very excited. At some point in time, you might even be able to hear me. So there's things to look forward to. Uh, a couple things just to note. Uh, we have a two-day best things that could ever happen. September 17th, we're going to have a big barbecue here. It's going to be catered by Barbecue MDs. It's going to be just delicious. And the next day, we have seven baptisms. Barbecue and baptism. I mean, that's put that on my gravestone. <laughs> now, we have an announcement uh, about a dental clinic and how we can support that. So, I'll give it a Is this mic working? Yeah. Um, here. I'm going to try and speak loudly. I hope you can you can hear me. It's when the motorcycle comes. It's okay. <laughs> uh, just a brief announcement. I, I think I brought this to your attention last year. The Mission of Mercy Dental Clinic is being held this Friday and Saturday um, at the David O. Lawrence Convention Center. And the doors open at 6 a.m. And the purpose of the Mission of Mercy um, event is to serve the underserved dental community. Um, those of us sitting here, many of us, wonder, is that really something that needs attention? Absolutely. There are many, and many times, these people have nowhere to turn. They don't know where to go. Many of them are embarrassed or uncomfortable. So the reason I bring it to your attention is because it's been on the radio. Maybe you've heard it. It's been on TV. <laughs> It's been, you know, advertised numerous places on billboards. But I think if someone personally, if you know someone personally that needs some dental care, whether it be, you know, they're in pain, whether they just haven't had a cleaning for a number of years because they don't have the means or the, uh, a regular dentist, please tell them about this. The biggest information you can tell them, even though it's being blasted all over those billboards and things, it is truly free. It's not one of those things where we say, oh yeah, it's gonna be free and then they're gonna sell me something or they're gonna ask me to come to their office. Absolutely not. Every person there is a volunteer. <laughs> Every person there is a volunteer and everything is absolutely free. In addition to be free, being free, it's judgment free. No one is questioned. No one gets asked, do you have insurance or why didn't you go to the dentist? No, it's a positive experience. So please, if you know anyone that is in need of some dental care, they set up the whole operation. X-rays, panorexes, uh, everything, the hygienists, the, everyone that's there volunteers. Over $850,000 worth of dental work was done in those two days last year. So please, if you know anyone, share with them and emphasize free, judgment free, please come. It does open at six, so you get in line and it's first come, first serve. So you pack your patients. What we found though is it's overwhelmingly positive for both the volunteers and for the patients. My own experience, I get way more than I give those two days. So thanks. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. all, all right, look at that. With all that being said, that's a wonderful ministry. I hope that we can support that well. But with all that being said, let us worship the living and the loving God. <laughs> Got a mic going. Please join with me now in the call to worship that is printed on your bulletin. We exist because God made us. We are here because Jesus called us. 
We are together because the Spirit binds us to each other. Let us worship God who makes us a community. Please join me with Here I Am to Worship. Join with me now in the prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletin. Holy and gracious God, at times we feel so lost, getting blown about by the latest crisis, by bad news, by our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us, we pray. Help us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Help us to set aside all our jealousies and prejudices, all of our betrayals and lies, all that adds to the world's hurt. 
Help us to grow to be more like Jesus, that we will bear his love and truth to the world. We pray in his name. Amen. Let's take a moment of silent confession. Friends, hear the good news. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus to us, not to condemn the world, but in order that we might be saved, healed, and forgiven through him. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. All right, I'd like to welcome the children up for the children's message. Get the children up here. Come on, Fricker. How are you guys doing? Did you make lots of honey? You made the honey. You collected the honey. <laughs> Come on, Maddox. Oh, we do get candy. Okay. All right. You guys are a little old. That's fine. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gotten lost before? <laughs> no. Your mother left you in a grocery store. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about the time you got lost. Where, where did you get lost? Um, it was actually at Camp Crestfield. At Camp Crestfield. Let me guess. A tornado came down, and spun you around, and flung you into the middle of the woods so you had no idea where you were? No. Okay. What, what happened? So that was a lot, I think. Um, An earthquake came, and it shook the ground, and you had to run. No, and I by the time you got safe, no? No, I just don't know where... What, I just didn't know where... I went to when I just found them. I've been walking around. So you were just walking around, just enjoying nature, and then all of a sudden realized... Oh, you were running, yeah. How about you guys? Have you ever gotten lost? No. How'd you get lost? Not really. <laughs> How'd you kind of get lost? Um, a car went fast. A car went fast. No, a car ran out of gas. Oh, your car ran out of gas. <laughs> Dad, Dad came and saved the day. I like that story. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about sometimes people wander away from their faith or they get lost in their faith, but you would think to get you away from God who we love would have to be a big event, right? But a lot of times we get lost simply by not paying attention. I lost in the <laughs> you get lost in a lot of stores. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about how sometimes we don't even realize we're kind of away from God because we're not really paying attention, okay? It's not always like a big thing that will send you uh, away from your faith. Sometimes it's just day by day, like, boringness. So, all right, let's pray. Gracious God, uh, we, are, we thank you for your love and grace. Uh, help us to keep our eyes on you. Amen. Amen. Let the kids think first. <laughs> Parents, have you ever tried to lose your kids? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kind of kidding. All right, our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. Listen and hear the word of the Lord. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the land of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for all humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm reminded recently of a story of a sheriff who needed to find another deputy. His deputy had retired. So a man named Gomer, who was not known to be uh, a Rhodes Scholar, came in for the job. He thought he'd test Gomer because he wasn't sure about his intelligence. He said, it's Gomer, what is one plus one? And Gomer said, well, one and one is 11. Well, I, I guess that's not completely wrong. But he said, okay, what two days of the week start with the letter T? He said, today and tomorrow. Well, all right. It's not completely wrong. But he said, all right, one more question. Gomer, can you tell me who killed Abraham Lincoln? Gomer thought for a minute. He said, you know, I'm not quite sure. He said, well, go home and think about it and come back tomorrow and tell me. So Gomer ran to the pool hall to see his friends. His friend said, well, how'd the interview go? He said, it went phenomenal. They already had me working a murder case. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, if my words are your words, let them enter hearts and minds. If my words are not your words, let them be quickly forgotten like seed on the hard ground blown into the wind. Amen. Our psalm this morning is a Thanksgiving psalm. It's a psalm thanking God from saving people, for blessing people. But it's also a song, psalm about wandering. Wandering and wondering about God. We see this throughout the Bible. People wandering the Negev after they are released from Egypt. We see parables where sheep are wandering from the shepherd. We see young rulers wandering away sad from Jesus after he's told them they have to give up riches. We see prophets proclaiming that there will be a time where many people wander. Time and time again, wandering is woven through the gospel. And then we look around our world. We think about people and their faith. And what I see is people wandering away from their faith. I don't see people running away. They just seem to be wandering. And this seems to be almost a generational thing. Some of you who are hmm, more seasoned than me, they graduated high school a couple years before me. You remember a time where church was packed. When I grew up, churches were maybe half empty, but funerals and weddings were always there. and People still wanted their babies baptized, even if they weren't religious. Today, we have gener a generation that might not have ever been inside a church building. They might not know who Moses is or Noah. This is just the reality of the world we live in. Now, I am speaking of generalities. I'm telling you, we have some young people here that are going to do some amazing things for God. But in a general sense, it seems our whole kind of country has wandered away from this understanding of faith and church. Now, just this week, me and my best buddy, Miss Sylvia here, got to visit uh, Dorothy Combe, or Miss Combe, as I'm told. And we were just talking about things, and she was, you know, she likes to ask questions of the pastor, you know, well, how many people are coming to church? <laughs> so I had my report, and then we started talking about, what was the last time you remember churches being full? Do y'all remember this? Would you say my last sermon? No? close. 9-11. 9-11, right? People were scared. 
They didn't know what was happening, and they flooded the churches. They flooded the churches. Now, a few weeks later, the churches weren't full anymore. What happened? Did something else terrible happen that chased everybody out of church? Or did they just slowly stop coming? It's kind of weird to think about, but it's not usually big events in people's lives that get them lost from their faith and make them run from the church. It's usually everyday busyness, monotonous, normal life. That sounds crazy to me. That sound right to you? You think, I, I love Jesus and he saved me and I have grace and I can go to heaven and all these great things. And somebody might go like, well, are you really close right now? And you're like, well, no, nah, I don't know. <laughs> like what happened? Uh, well, nothing really. I just kind of ebbed away from it. We see this in the Bible constantly. The Israelites lose faith out of boredom all the time. Do you remember Moses went up and he gets the Ten Commandments? And what happens when he comes down? They're worshiping a golden calf. They're worshiping a golden calf. What made them do that? Basically, they had nothing going on. Moses went up to the mountain and they were just there. Nothing tragic made them switch their faith to a different God. It was simply boredom. And the prodigal son, Yes, the youngest son has this big revelation after all these terrible things happen to him. But you remember at the end with the older brother? He gets chastised. The older brother is the one that doesn't understand God's grace. The older brother who just worked every day. Nothing big, but he doesn't seem to understand God. Now, here's a story I love. and I can't remember if I told you, but if I can't remember, maybe you don't either. Me and my cousin Charlie were at the beach when we were like 10 years old. And we went on a raft and we're kicking our little legs. And we kick, 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 kick. And then something happened. We got distracted by something. And we looked around and we couldn't find land. Okay? We just couldn't find land. So what do you do? You can't just pick a direction and guess. So what we found ourselves is that we were lost. And we had no understanding or way to get our way back. This is the danger of wander. A big storm didn't pick us up and throw us into the middle of the ocean. We just simply weren't really paying attention. We were literally going with the flow. Now, I'm here today, so as you know, uh, I can't remember what happened, but somehow I saved us both. And, you know, I don't want uh, anything for being a hero. I just appreciate the, you know, acknowledgement of it. Now, I want us to stop and think really quick about ourselves, okay? Have you ever wandered from God, from your faith? Does it feel like right now you're wandering a little bit from your faith? I want you to think about that for a minute. This isn't a shame, anyone. It's just to take acknowledgement of yourself. Maybe you've been going to church less. Maybe you dread going to church. Can I get an amen? Hey. <laughs> Maybe you haven't been praying as much. Maybe you haven't been thinking about God as much. What happened to lead to this? Just a little bit of wandering. How do you get that back? How do you make God a higher priority in your life? Have, do you see that in yourself? So often, we don't see it when it's happening. Are you reading your devotional less? Are you reading your Bible less? This message is for you. It's time to come back. It's time to come back to God. It's time to reprioritize God in your life. Take stock of that. Don't be ashamed that you wandered away. Feel encouraged that you're ready to come back and put God a high up on that mantle. Reestablish the faith that you want. Now my next message is for anybody that doesn't feel like they're in that place. 
here's how you can support others. It's right in the beginning of our song. Here's how you can support those who are wandering. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. People, I need to hear your story. I need to hear your faith story. But there's a problem. We tend to tell the good parts that we like that make us look good, and we don't tell the parts where we wandered or struggled with our faith. What happens is other people who are struggling think, I just don't have what that person has. They have it all together, and I just don't have that. We need to tell our whole story. Tell the things that have made you struggle in your life. Share it with others. It's important. I can't tell you how many people think that everybody else knows more about the Bible than them, prays more than them, is closer to God than them. 90% of the people here think that. Well, how can that be true? I want you to just take a look at somebody you've known for 10 years or so. Go ahead, you can look. All right, I noticed that almost none of you looked. <laughs> Good Presbyterians. I want you to take five seconds and think. Think about somebody you've known for a long period of time. Jeez. <laughs> think about that. Do you have that person in mind, maybe a, a person from church or in your life that seems to have this wonderful faith? Okay. Have they ever shared their faith with you? And if they have, have they told you the hard parts? Have they told you the struggles, their doubts, the part where they were walking through the desert? You know, God's story in the Old Testament, if we don't hear this 40 years of struggle and wandering in a desert, the rest of it kind of doesn't make as much sense. Have you shared your struggles and doubts with somebody? If you haven't, I'm a good place to start because I'm not allowed to tell anybody else you're crazy. <laughs> If we don't share our struggles, people will struggle in their faith. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about how I almost lost my faith. I was 15, okay? I was a New Wilmington Missionary Conference. Missionaries come from all over the world. It's 117th year this year. And they have a big youth program, and I was sitting there, and it was like Thursday night, which is the big night, and the speaker was really good. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> and he goes... I want you to really focus in on God here. And they start playing this song. I should have just had you play the song. Oh, anyway. You know the song Sanctuary? Lord, prepare me to be sanctuary. Okay. So they're playing it. I thought, this is awesome. I think I feel the Holy Spirit. And then they played it again. And I went, all right. Then they played it again. And then they kept playing it. And I'm not one to exaggerate. And I counted. It was 245,000 times in a row they played this song. <laughs> But honestly, I was sitting there and I'm looking around and everybody seemed like they had their eyes closed and their hands up and were really, was really feeling it. And I thought, you know what? I, I, I don't have what they have. I don't have that connection to God that they must have because they seem to be so in tune with it and I'm just not anymore. Now, years later, I found out that the vast majority of them were faking it because they didn't want to get in trouble. They didn't want to get singled out. Had I known that then, it wouldn't have led to about three or four or five years of real struggle of thinking that maybe God talked to other people in a very intense way, and he just didn't with me. It made me feel like if I doubted a little bit about the Bible or about God, then I probably wasn't a good Christian because other people didn't. It made me feel like, you know what? Sometimes I didn't pray all the time. Sometimes I didn't read my Bible or know my Bible as well as everybody else. So maybe this just isn't for me. That's what happens when we share our story, but don't tell the parts of where we struggle. We only tell the good parts. We're giving them a false sense of what it feels like to follow Jesus. 
Read the Gospels. It's constantly people whose lives are in chaos and they're coming to Jesus for some clarity. The disciples, they are broken people. We see that. Peter is not a perfect person. All of these Bible characters have flaws that are shown and told to us so that we understand that. But when we share our stories with others sometimes, we leave those flaws out. What message does that give to them? Now, I know it seems a little silly. Hey, they kept playing a song and Matt got bored and nobody else did. But I'm telling you, for years and years, that really left a mark on me that I didn't think I could do the Christianity that they all were doing. When in reality, I just wasn't as good at closing my eyes and nodding my head as everybody else. That's still true, by the way. You have to share the struggle. You have to. You have to share the struggle. If you don't, the people are wandering are going to get lost. Your struggle to be their beacon of light that helps get them back. Your struggles and doubts to be their map that helps them understand that this is not uh, a place like a, a country club that you have to ascend to and pay for, that this is a hospital for broken and sinful people. And that Christ wants us here. There's no shame in struggling or doubting about your faith. Take pride in that, understanding that God has called you through that and past it into a loving, embrace relationship. I really encourage, nay, I dare you, I dare you to share a struggle in your faith with somebody else. You have no idea how impactful that can be for them. Yes, share the good parts. But don't leave out the bad or you're giving them a false idea of what Christianity could be. Parents, I'm talking to you too. If you only tell your kids the good part and leave out the struggle, when they start struggling, they're going to think, I did something wrong. This isn't right. You got to share it all. You got to share it all. We take our faith seriously. This week, this week, share a struggle with somebody and listen to theirs. And realize that you aren't alone and you're not more sinful than anybody else and you haven't doubted more than anybody else that we've all felt like that but when we come together we can proclaim the grace and love of Jesus Christ until he comes again amen amen <laughs> That's my one for the day. Uh, please join me in uh, creating me a clean heart.
restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Let's join our hearts together in a time of prayer, church. Gracious God, we are thankful for the love and blessings that you have placed upon us. We call out for you, a time of heartache and a type of pain, a time of anticipation. We pray for our young people and our leaders going to Camp Crestfield next week, that you put your spirit upon them, Lord. Let them enjoy the camp. Let them be restored and renewed in their faith. And let them have a wonderful time in friendships families, and let them know you better, Lord. We pray for our military and police, firefighters, our nurses, paramedics, frontline workers. Throughout the last few years that have been very difficult, Lord, place your spirit of comfort upon them. Renew their minds and hearts. Let them know that their service is loved and appreciated by so many people. We pray for our teachers who are in immense dread knowing that school is coming back. Give them patience. Give them love. Whether it's their first year or 31st year, let them rekindle their fire and love for teaching young people and helping them grow. We pray for those in Kentucky, Lord, whose houses were flooded, whose loved ones lost lives, Let your presence dwell upon them, Lord. Give us wisdom and strength to support them and help them in recovering from this terrible tragedy. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Give wisdom to the leaders. Let them see that peace is what you call for, Lord, and not bloodshed and war. Give them level heads. Put their pride aside. Let them return to their own lands. We pray for each person here, the listening, that they are reminded that they are loved by the Lord who has created all things. Give them your sight, give them your heart. Let them share their struggles with others, knowing that it's never too late to come back to you, no matter where we are. We pray this and all things as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Now we have the opportunity to respond to the word and the prayers and the music this morning in worship by giving, by giving our tithes and offerings so that others may be blessed through the building and church community that we have here at Mount Vernon.
Gracious God, we are thankful for these gifts. Multiply them, give us wisdom and strength to use them well for your honor and glory. Amen. Please join with me with amazing grace. wandering come back we miss you god calls you back it's time to come home if you're in a good place share your story as god's redeemed as the psalm tells us tell your story but don't leave out the hard parts tell the whole story and you will help those around you in ways you probably never fully understand so as you return home or you go out to tell your story, don't go alone. Go with the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship, friendship, and community we have in the Holy Spirit today and every day. All the people said, Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you. face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and